Hello and welcome back to Maple Farm. It is now November 1st and we are up early because I went and did what I said I was going to do. And I have brought over all the cows that we had prior into uh, this uh, dairy pen. If I bring up our animals and show you, you'll see we now have all the cows we had before. And I brought the feed over that we had. Now we sold the milk. I brought the milk that we <laughs> had as well. Everything that was in there, we've brought over. So we're now going to see if November, by having these cows, we have, or, or we're able to produce milk. It looks like we are we're already producing more milk. Which looks good. I'll just come away from it and then see if it reloads the number down bottom right. Yeah, 1,341. So they're producing milk, but they had less feed than we had previously. And I'd spent about £80,000 on feeding the cows that now aren't there. So if they continue to produce milk today, and I'll check them at the end of the day, I'm going to put the probably about £60,000-£70,000 worth of feed that I put in there, because I put some in with the beef as well. I'll put that back in here for these cows to help sustain them since obviously it disappeared with the other cows and we've spent that money we've not got that money back so that's what I wanted to show you I'm gonna get things ready for today and uh, we'll get going and the first part of that starts with getting our early <laughs> early our November cut of grass because we're going to need a fair old bit. This one we're going to have as unconditioned and this will go straight into the dairy for feed. May put a little bit in the beef but mainly for dairy. Then this one, which I'm now considering this one is the two, these two are going to be cut and uh, Ted, they'll go for hay. This one, this massive one, this will go for hay. We've got some silage going. That should be fermented soon. So we'll have hay, we'll have silage, we've got straw, and we're now going to get some sugar beet in. So we should be good for feeding the cows. Excuse me, I'm going to lose my voice. Well, I come here and I was about to say, I don't think they're going to graze anymore. But by the looks of it, this morning they've had a good munch on that bit and not this bit so perhaps we've got a little bit more grazing which would be handy and if I quickly run over have a little look at the dairy how are they doing how are they doing for grazing if that's if that's happening they would have completely cleared this one no seems like we just got this first strip as well hmm we'll see but they have got feed in there, so perhaps they didn't need more. We'll keep an eye on that. So that's good. So we'll head up to the store, and we'll go and sort ourselves out some uh, beet harvesting equipment, because our big beet field is ready. I've got a worker waiting in the door. They're going to follow me up. Now, I'm probably going to have a little bit of a strange setup here, compared to most, because I'm going to be running multiple tractors to do this. But I think it's going to work out quicker and more efficient for me. We've got the machinery. So to do it like this, I don't think will be a problem. Anyway, let's uh, let's head up to the store because I'll probably have to sort that <clears throat> sort that follow me out. Anyway, they got lost last time, but yeah, let's go do that and uh, head over to our beet field. And as we arrive at field 36, our sugar beet field, we have got the uh, the grim, grimy, grimmer, however you like to pronounce it, uh, rooster 604 in tow, and hopefully our worker is right behind us. They are literally, boom, right behind us. Chill, homie. <laughs> there we go. And uh, we are going to be harvesting, obviously, we're going to be harvesting our beets. Now, I've brought the extra worker because I want them to go off and take the tops off, move the foliage, 
that will work at a quicker speed. Get them through, get that done. I'll put that on course play. Let's just uh, try and get them on there. You can join me while I set this up. So we'll put that on course play. Are we on the field? We are. I can see it's outlined. And we shall probably, because we're going to want quite a good turn and circle for ourselves. I'm going to put that on four headlands. Let's see what that looks like if we uh, generate that. Will we be able to turn OK? I think maybe five. We'll go with that. That's five. OK. So we shall close that. And we want them to start at the first point, which is white on us. If I back them up, they should just go to it now. I'm trying to understand all these tools that I use, I need to be better with them, so I have tried to, uh, to get better. There we are, that should be fine for them. That does that. Copy course, temporary course. I think it does, right. So there we go, that is them off, and that's what they're gonna work. That's a lot of work. <laughs> Love it. Right, so we'll jump out there, we'll leave them to it. But then, this works a fair few miles an hour slower. I think that's nine and this is six. And I'm not worried about up and them speeds. So how? Um, that doesn't have any. So if I clear that, if I but oh see, I'm learning people. If I now set them off, they should follow on behind. Go pick the bee. And they kind of are. How how perfect this will be with them getting everything, I'm not too sure. But that's a good start. That is an excellent start. So I'm going to head back to the farm, and I am going to get uh, the New Holland with trailer on the back, so that we can unload the bees. That's going to be awesome. So for me, that probably means a busy day. I hope this unloads on this side. How does this unload? Do I need to about it to be the other side? Or is it just... Just got stuck. Let's see what happens. That'll be annoying, but is unloading out the other way. Yeah. Okay, I might have to change some settings for that. It's just going to fill up really quickly as well. Clearly it's just got a small capacity on there. So after a few teeth and problems, we are back underway. Anyone who, as I started this up, said, no, you need to let that first worker go for a bit, mate. <laughs> you are 100% right. Give yourself a cookie. And, uh, yeah, that caused me issues. Everyone got blocked up. Now, I have had to turn crop destruction off because, unfortunately, they want to work clockwise. And uh, that puts me in crops in future we'll try and do everything we can to get ourselves set up anti-clockwise we'll see if they'll do that but yeah as I was about to say <laughs> as, as I came in upon the disaster, disaster uh, today it's going to be a lot of me just carting so I can let the workers do their thing which is fine, I can then make sure I stay on top of 
the mowing as that's happening. And uh, maybe do a few other things. We can uh, pop to the store and whatnot. Now, I have purchased all of this, or say all of this, both of these pieces of equipment. Both the, uh, the actual root harvester and the uh, foliage topper. That's ours. Beyond that, it's cost us, well, a little over or a little under, yeah, a little over a thousand, a hundred thousand. So, it's not cheap, but we're going to need it. I think we'll do a lot of beat now going forward. We'll always have a field of beat because we're going to need a cut beat or beat pulp for our crops. Oh, for our crops, for our TMRs, for our feeds and stuff like that. Plus, if we ever do get further along with the distillery and making whiskey and uh, vodka and stuff like that, which I would like to do, we will uh, we will need the sugar. So it's going to have its uses. Now, would I be better off with a <laughs> larger trailer? 100% it's going to be a long job for me and we own this bit of land I think we should uh, cut a hole in the fence as well to uh, save us some time so perhaps I'll uh, pick up the pick up the uh, chainsaw on the way back and we can uh, put, put a hole in there so we can get out easier because if not we're going to do complete laps of this field That also means we're going to need to be getting some equipment or even a, a little production setup for cut and beat and beat pulp and all that sort of stuff. You can get a front loader attachment, which is a bucket that will cut the beat for us. But I think we're going to need a lot. So it might be worthwhile getting ourselves a, uh, a little beat cut and placeable so we can just load stuff in and do it that way. It's going to be a, a slow process. This this whole beet harvest might take the entirety of uh, November to do, which is absolutely fine. We've got the grass going on. We've got that going on. We can, uh, so we can try and look into placing something or leasing some equipment to do the beet cut. This first beet harvest is going to have a lot of um, learning and discovering involved in it. It's, it's not going to be a perfect harvest, because it's our first one. And we're at a field that is quite a distance from our actual farm and our setup where we want to be. So it's going to be a lot of uh, jumps. I'm not going to show everything. I'll show as, as much as I can to, uh, to let you guys see what it is we're doing, how it's coming along. As you can see, the actual uh, the harvester fills up real quick. I did think, <laughs> initially I thought perhaps the uh, the capacity on that was a little bit more than what it is. It's fine. We, we get a few fills, or a few empties, and then we're full, and then we go off and we do our thing. Way over shot me mark. But yeah, I managed to get them to uh, stop for their for their unloads, they were just driving off and I think once they're going through the crop, they should back up and allow us to uh, to empty without as if we're driving in the crop it's just unfortunate that they only want to work in this one direction you know, we could uh, run the option of using the uh, true speed mod on the, on the Lambo for the harvesting but it would only just fill quicker so we'd still have to do all the running it wouldn't sort of benefit us in that sense, so uh, that's why we just let them go at their pace. And even if I set this to a worker, follow me, upload, I, I don't have um, auto drive and stuff like that set up, so they wouldn't go and deliver it themselves. We would still have to do that, so that's why we're doing it this way. And we just got a notification to let us know that our bunker silo has finished fermenting, so uh, we've got our silage. We're working on getting our hay, working on getting our bee, we're getting there. It's just, again, it's just going to be a little bit lean for Christmas, <laughs> the new year for our cows. We've now moved the John there over. They are mowing our largest uh, meadow now, 
the one that's got the uh, the old horse pasture, the meadow, and the small meadow that we turned to uh, uh, grain, and then uh, back to uh, meadow, and then combined that that whole patch. Now it's being mowed, and that is being conditioned. So uh, they're getting done. It's just going to be a bit of a, a bit of a choppy episode. Once once I've done this once, maybe twice. I'll get a better feel for how to put this this job together and how we'll do this because I always have to do the running. It'll be a difficult one to ever just be going on in the background. It'll be something, something we always have to be involved in. But I want to show at least today me doing it. I mean, we could, I could do November two, spend my whole day just doing this uh, because it's doing the same thing without necessarily having to uh, bring you guys to it be an option. I'll see how I feel about that. I don't like doing too much off screen and not showing. So I do stop a bit abrupt. Um, I don't like not showing what we're doing and where the quantities are coming from. Especially when at the minute we're buying feed and doing stuff. And I don't want anyone to think that we're cheating or stuff because people, people do think that. As soon as you do something a little bit different from what they do or I don't know. If you came in and suddenly we had feed because I'd been doing this and doing my silage and doing my hay, you might not like it. So you have to let me know in the comments how you feel about that sort of thing. But me following the harvester for three episodes probably isn't going to be all that great. Especially when we're cutting in, cutting out, and doing different things. And I should imagine by the end of this, this whole. <laughs> All is going to be completely full with beat. So it's, uh, it's going to be a lot. I'm not sure how we'll tell how much we've got. I'm not sure if we look at it, it'll tell us sort of pile quantity. Now, when I brought the cows over from the old save, I also brought my chickens. And I tried to balance a bit of that feed out with what we put in there. We just, I don't know why I'd go over here. There is food. If we uh, we'll check on the animal page, I should imagine our cows are getting short. Oh, they're doing all right. They're producing milk, which is the main thing. That's the good thing. Getting the milk in there. As you can see, we now have lots of different chickens rather than um, a few, and we've got probably way too many. But we can fill this each night with uh, energy base feed if they're producing eggs and they're not. I think we need to add the other things in. So they need, or they can take cut beet as well and um, I think canola or soybeans or it might just be soybeans actually, yeah, so we do need soybeans. So I think that's going to be corn in there. Perhaps we'll have that as a big sugar beet field. That'll be sugar beet when we plant it. That can be soybean. And our field that has sugar beet in at the minute, it's a good size, we can fill that with corn. We've got our two uh, barley fields. Probably have to make one of them wheat now because I don't think the chickens will take the barley. I think they take wheat or sorghum. They try to do some research, people. Try to get good. So that's what we probably need, and then we can have our canola still ticking over because we can use canola for uh, cows as well as the um, like the mineral part of it. I'm sure, we can put cows in there for that. I'm sure, I'll, I'll I'll double check. I was uh, looking in the uh, Maze Plus XMLs for feeds and stuff like that. It was just easier for me. Stuck that up on the other screen and did it that way. Our brewery is working again. Uh, for that, I just moved some more of the XML files over that we were using previously. Uh, looking at it in in our new uh, save, although we owned it and we could fill it and we were doing stuff with it, it hadn't actually registered that we owned it, so it wasn't produced. And uh, 
in the old save, obviously it did. So uh, I just moved that information over and uh, that's now running. So I've gone from a few months ago being someone that was always a bit too wary about getting in the XMLs and balls and things up to getting a bit nifty at it. We are we are doing things in the background to uh, improve our gameplay, I think. I've also uh, gone and adjusted the Keenan. So the Keenan, our uh, mixer wagon, that now works with Maze Plus because being a mod that was pre-Maze Plus it wasn't set up to run with Maze Plus and the uh, the mixes that Maze Plus offers, now it does, did that, I'm sort of proud of myself for this sort of thing, it's, uh, it's growth as a player, <laughs> let's, let's put it that way. We've had a few more unloads dropped off into the storage shed. It's now half past three and the sun is already starting to, uh, to dip. We're not going to have a lot of daylight. I guess we're going to be dark by about five, half five, I think. But this is something with my workers, they'll keep going. And uh, I can keep running probably quite late into the night. I have no issue with doing that. Like I say, I'm still not sure what to do with regards to the the following um, days. They they may be they may be off screen. But I think I'll get this trailer full, and then uh, what we'll do is we'll head over to the store again, and we'll look at some of the equipment that will be needed to cut the beat, and that sort of thing. We'll we'll I think we'll probably purchase the. Uh, the Flegel bucket with the cut fitted on the bottom. We can do that. And then we'll have a little go with it, filling that up. Not filling obviously the whole thing up, but we'll have a go with cut with it. We just need to get this trailer full and uh, you'll join me at the store to uh, have a little play. So we're at the store, and the tool in question is this one here, the Flegel Ruby 2000, uh, 2300 litre capacity. You can load anything into it like a normal working bucket, but it just has that option of cutting the crops as well. So we're going to purchase that. That is uh, 15,000. It's expensive. It's expensive, but we're going to buy it. We need it. I brought the Massey over to uh, to do this. We've we've not got anything else front loader compatible that's free at the minute. The John Deere is uh, taking its time doing the uh, the other meadow. It doesn't like cutting so close to the uh, the hedgerow. Uh, it keeps clipping on them, so that hedgerow may need to be removed, or I might bring the meadow in a little bit with some uh, some painting just so I don't have to keep going in, over there and doing that. They also got stuck on three trees. I've cut those trees out, removed the stumps, and those trees need to be dealt with in winter. They're just uh, laying on the side. But anyway, we are finally here. Let's turn the big light on. As you can see, it just attaches like a regular bucket underneath. That's the, uh, the cutting element. Now, some of our crop, some of our crops, some of our mixes, also ask for cut corn. Does anyone know how we cut corn? Can I cut corn with this? Do I need something different? Because I can't find anything that says, oh, I knew this weight weren't going to be enough. That's so annoying. Right, just lower it for now. Just have to drag the bucket. It is heavy. <laughs> Very heavy. So we'll try make our way into the uh, into the cows because I, th I think we can just feed the cut beat directly into the cows. Now obviously we're not going to do this for all of our feed. That would be insane. What we will need to do is cut beat and put it in the food mixer or cut beat in bulk and then load it into a trailer. That's why I'm saying we might need to get one of the, uh, the production sites that actually cut beat. That might be something we need. I think. I mean, I think we definitely have to get some heavier weights. But if we turn it on, 
was going to say, it says it's not accepted here, but they took it. It's gone. Unless it has to go in into the actual, uh, unless it's laying on the floor. I should have looked. They need some base feed in there. They need the uh, grass very quickly. But yeah, that's how the tool works. If I if I put it in the mixer, I could do that. But that's how we're gonna have to try and feed our animals. We'll put some silage in. We'll put some. I'll, I'll look back at what the exact recipe is I want. But I'm pretty sure cut beet, silage, hay and uh, a little bit of mineral is what we want. I will be purchasing a, <laughs> a bigger weight for sure. Just turn the engine off. I did turn the engine off. It's the other tractor I can hear. I think. What's the truck? I left the truck engine running. I haven't even used that today. Oh, Ain't got the money to be wasting that sort of petrol. I've got my stone picker still around the back there because we're going to need to stick, uh, pick the uh, the beet field when it's done. But I'm going to try and spend a few more hours, probably up to about 8 o'clock, getting the beet cut. I want to get as much of that done as I can. I'll keep loading that in there. And then after 8 o'clock, I'm going to re reclaim the feed we lost by changing over the animals and changing over that file. Like I say, it's a roundabout. 60 70 grams worth of feed I need to get. It'll be uh, the bags and the, the hay bales. So I think it's around about 35 hay bales I want, and then the rest will just all go into bags. I'll uh, spend my time loading that in so that the cows will be happy for at least one more day. And then, uh, then yeah, we'll have to uh, see what we can do over winter. Money is dwindling, as you can see, using the workers, uh, buying that bucket. I also brought um, weighted tyres for the for the Massey, which absolutely made no difference. But yeah, that is that is it for today's episode. I haven't got a clue how I'm going to put this together. It's going to be quite jumpy because, you know, there's a lot of drive in between. I don't want to be showing all the in-between bits. So there's, there's not really an opportunity to time-lapse it for me today. And going into November 2 and 3, I may try and put those all in. I can't even see where the, uh, <laughs> the other vehicles are. Uh, I might try and put November 2 and 3 into one episode so we get this done, we get the grass done, and we're ready to move on to the new year. But hopefully, you've enjoyed it. If you have, give a big fat thumbs up down below. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, turn your bell notification on, follow me when the videos come live. As always, comments and feedback down there. How would you manage the beets? And also, does anyone know how I cut my corn? That would be handy. Right, you guys have yourselves a wonderful day. And uh, I'll see you in the next one, hopefully. Bye-bye.